up turns. It definitely hasn't ran in forever. The You're looking good on the passenger side. Oh, oh. oh. It's, it's coming back on. So for everybody watching, says my prices are high, go buy one from Kansas. This is how it shows up. You gonna do this on your street at your house in the suburbs? You guys got a skid loader at home or something? What are you gonna do? At least when you buy them from me, they roll, they steer, sometimes they stop. We deliver them, we shoot them right into your garage. Like what does this cost you at home? In time, we've been at this for what, an hour? Almost with heavy two. equipment, with three people, with four people? Try doing it at home in the suburbs. Hire your hotshot, have them bring it. This is what you get. He honestly wasn't very much help. Guy doesn't even say much more than hello and pay me. This was the crown jewel. Didn't really matter what happened with the truck. Oh, there's two of them. Because this hood is from a GMC 550. Both sides. Both sides with the emblems. This is, there's a thousand bucks in the bed of this truck. Well, sometimes it's not the truck. It's what's in the truck. I've bought trucks to get visors, to get hoods, to get your eye cameraman, yellow jacket. No. Uh oh, you <laughs> zip tie scared you. This one came from a lot of little, like old car magazines and stuff. Yeah, hey, I don't know. It'll give you something to read in the bathroom. Classics. Rob. Oh, it turns. <laughs> Get that damper. Yeah. They're down here, Shane. Look at those damper pulls. It moves easy. There's a chance it might run. Yeah, maybe. It almost moves too easy, though. I don't know what color this thing's going to turn out. I don't want to mess with it much because it looks like yellow is coming. True. They never made them in yellow, though. This white's the original. That's what, yeah. So it was white, then it was blue, then it was yellow. It has a red, too. That's, it looks like an oxide primer. They were trying to yeah. save it from rusting. It's an old steel trunk in here. I didn't know what this windshield was There's for. There's some old lights and stuff in here. Okay. This piece of glass didn't look like trucks, so I didn't really care if it got broke. Oh, yeah. Some old lights and stuff in there. That's, that was already kind of thinking. Nothing crazy. No. There's another thing of old lights. Yeah. Like they had a bunch of stuff at this sand, but it was all kind of junk. I'm surprised that hood was in the bed of this because that truck wasn't anywhere on the farm and that's a nice hood. Yep, that's for a GMC 550. It's the same hood that's in a fire truck we had. Mm -hmm. That fits it, I think 350, 450, 550. Emblems are on this side too. All right. So we got a 51 or 52 Ford here. It's an F1, half ton short bed is pretty much all I buy anymore. Flathead six inside does turn. I don't know, me and Clay are looking at it like somebody robbed the carb off of it already. It definitely hasn't ran in forever. The distributor's taken apart. The wiring's a mess. I'm not hopeful for it, but who knows? Joe Bates is, is back to work and he likes to tinker with these, so he'll probably come in and- No starter either. Yeah, no start. Like it, it's been robbed and it turns almost too easy. Like there's no compression. I mean, it just, 
it turns real easy. So that's it. I might have some of this hood trim, maybe. If not, this stuff's pretty easy to get online. It's got the right seat in it, got steering column. Let's see if it's got a Vintag. Vintag's gone. Vintag's gone off of the firewall too. So what we're gonna have to do is, there's a VIN number. I could see it. It's on the frame. It's right here on the top of the frame horn. It's popping through. We'll have to get that VIN. They have some kind of something here, whatever this is, some kind of resistor or something, but that's one of the original holes there for the VIN tag that goes on the firewall. This is not supposed to be there. There's four holes, or there's two holes on a caddy corner. It might, that tag might be inside there. Yeah, hopefully it parts. is. I, these Ford's 48, and actually earlier, like large, like 10, 15 year span of Ford's, the VIN tags were just screwed on with flathead little screws that were real short, so they're often missing. So I'll run the frame number and we'll make sure this isn't titled anywhere else. I've never had one titled anywhere else. That's a mess if it is. So that's another reason that, you know, you buy it from us and I save you from all that stuff because if I run that frame VIN with my attorney and that thing's popping in another state, then we'll fight whoever's using that VIN because they, they used it illegally. They bought a set of tags and they put it on their truck and that's illegal. The law follows the chassis. I got the chassis, so I get the title. Never had that happen. Typically, does that does happen a lot, not on these old trucks. Muscle cars, Corvettes, that kind of stuff happens all the time. Probably put it off to the side for a little bit here, and then Clay will get it in. We'll see what we're working with. Might not be today, but we'll get it in there and hopefully get this thing running, and it'll at least be roll, steer, cleaned out, ready to go. So. You ready to do this? Yeah, we're Well, we got me and Clay mic'd up for the first time ever while we're doing this, so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully you guys like the audio a little bit better. Oh, dude. Well, I guess we're going to check that probably first. Stuff out of here I had in here. Get that out of there. But this one turns pretty easy. You can already see it's starting to want to turn. Yeah, but what we're going to have to do is, you know, take all these off. So what I'm going to do first is, you know, break all this stuff up then air them out. Then we'll get all the spark plugs out and we're going to scope down in and see what the cylinders look like. To me, it feels like there's not enough compression. Just so, from you pulling on the fan, it doesn't feel like there's enough compression? I don't know. You know, that's something we're going to have to check. You know, so if this all looks good we can get it, the engine turning over and see if um the mechanical fuel pumps off this engine too but we can see if uh you know our cylinders look good we'll get a little bit of oil transmission fluid in them whichever it may be we're going to check and see if any of the valves are stuck when we're in there obviously but um you know if we got that we can get you know the starter whirling battery hooked up and stuff you know get it turning over like that get a compression checker on there we'll get this light There we go. Now I'm gonna get probably just hit it with that air to get it off. But yeah, if you look here, there is a lot of buildup in here. It's just dirt, sand, but you wanna get all that broke up and off. I'm just making sure I get around the face broke loose for the most part. Get this out of there. That's a lot of sand. 
This, uh, probably watch out in a minute. Let that dust settle a minute and then, uh, really didn't stir up that much. Give them a little squirt on them. So somebody was asking us on the comments, is that PB Blaster pretty much WD-40? No. It's a whole different thing. Well, this penetrates into the pores of the metal. You know, it breaks through rust. WD-40 doesn't really penetrate. WD-40 stays on something. This will evaporate. So that's why I always go back through and hit it with actual oil after. I think these are the five ace ones. That's the one I had. That's one one has a nice step stool for this kind of stuff. Same with this. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's gonna fucking hit my hand. Oh. So they look kind of all the same. Fouls look okay and stuff. Finger hurts. Set I need a starter to check compression. I don't have one. Not in this. I don't know if they're the same as uh, the flathead V8s or what, but I'll have to look around and see what starter goes on these. I'll have to look it up. I'll sit them right here. Pull this up. There you go. I remember doing all this. Don't you need like two screwdrivers? Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, this is gonna be hard. That's all I was saying. I need really need both hands for this. I'm, that's gonna be good on this one. There I'm, I'm right here though too. I'll work through it with you. Okay, that's two. Ah, no. Oh, I pulled it past it. God damn it. Such a pain in the butt. They're like spring loaded? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm fighting against the spring. Ah, it spun on me. Both of these ones did. I, I, I don't have four hands. There's a way that I can do it for you or help you with it. Hold that like that. Hold hold the screwdriver. Yeah. And now i got to fix this one and hold back on that. Oh. Now we got to do one more. So we got to turn this down. Watch yourself. Okay. Oh. What, you gotta reset that one back yeah. in? There's a screwdriver. Go. Cool. Okay, now we gotta get these holes lined up here. What are those four things that are spring loaded? Do you have to pull apart like these things, right? That's what those um, are. They, what are they called? That's what makes the connection and makes your starter work for the most part. Okay. far as we can, make it as smooth as we can. Good, we'll take it as some. It's like it belongs there, huh? Yep. So that's all we're doing. So we got some good threads on it now. I'll get them there in a minute. 
That's a piece of leather. It's shredded leather. Look, it's like has designs on it and stuff. It's not really new. It's a dope. Many uh, groups from blank, I, I can't see that part as a whole, to NAACP women struggling together as in their liberation movement, the minority movement groups are small but growing. Hi, darling. Have a joyous, wonderful first. Is that like a something from his mom, you think? Looks like a card. It is. Let me see that thing, too, dude. That is, this is very strange. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have to pick through some of this stuff and see. I mean, I can almost read this. Hi, darling. Have a joyous and wonderful first Christmas and New Year's up at, I think it says Napo. I don't know if that's in California. Sending check Dude, early. all about, read it. Oh, God. A bunch more in this thing I just found. Strong national, strong nation with a positive mission. Oh, God. Dude, this guy literally wrote a goddamn manifesto. His handwriting was better, but I wonder if somebody will... You gotta think, that's way back in the day. It sounded like he was writing some crazy stuff at one point. Yeah, he was. That doesn't look like notes from a class. No, it looks like a that book. is... It's talking about the minorities and all kinds <coughs> of stuff. Like, because here's what I got that out of. Magazines. That's what that was in. There's a hair on it. His hair is on it. Oh, cigarette book? Oh, that's pretty interesting. Cigarette magazine. Marlboro Country Store. I think that would be pretty cool. And written stuff and notes. Like there's everything for this truck up here. We're going to have to sift through this. All the little dash pieces are in this truck. From what I see from the most part, I want see like all these pieces for the dash. That's good to have. Uh, that's awesome that it's all here. I'm going to have to take the shoes out. Yeah. Look at that, it's dude. Huh. Huh. That was the whole no thing. No last name, though. There's a Jesus sandal underneath here. <laughs> you see that? Uh-uh. One side. Say it again. So this truck broke my finger. Yes, it did. Ah. San Diego State College. So he was in the middle of the movement. Like literally classes? What do you think he went to school for? Intro political science, intro to philosophy, conditioning, religion, general honors. There might be two Jesus sandals. I wear them. It's got an address and everything on it. So this is 69 to 70 this year. Alright, you go. I'm gonna give him a ring or we can. Hold on. Let's pull this. Let's pull this seat out. Who wants to get here again? Then we'll clean up the fucking floor.
positive now. We're going to the ground today. This one runs down. Checker. So it's all like 30 around there. Can we get them up to like 50? Yeah, all right. You know, all the parts are moving. I saw the distributor moving pretty good. Well. Hey, you're uh, leaking a little oil, it looks like, maybe? Yeah, that is oil. There, um, There's no cap on it. It looks like it just needs capped, right? Yeah, that does need a cap. Nah, that's it. Oh, that's Blue Monster, okay. Yeah, it's all white stuff. This will at least shut this leak up. It's pretty good. I don't think that's going to leak no more. Uh, I just walked into the shop for the day. Alright, so what do you got? Whipping 50? I'm like, <coughs> well, with the 6 volt, it don't spin as fast as like with a 12 yeah. or something. With a 12, you're getting 50? I'm getting like 30 at every cylinder right now. Did you scope it? Yeah, it look everything's moving as it should and stuff. There's a lot of carbon buildup, so I think that carbon buildup is not allowing the valves to close all the way. So I put some blaster and tranny fluid, like a mix in there, and cranked it around a couple times. And if you can't get 50, 60, 50, if you can't 60. get 60, I don't want to mess with it. Okay, it ain't gonna run on 30. That's not enough. It's just gonna be a waste of time. You got valve issues if you're only 30 pounds. You got burnt valves or something. It's well, there's a lot of like carbon buildup. Right, like, they're not there. they're not seating all yeah. the way. They're partially seating, and it's sometimes this will break it up. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I agree. I mean, don't spend you know spend another two hours on it or something. See if, it, if you can get it up. But if you can't get that number up, then it's not worth messing with. Then I'll just take this wiring set off for the next one. Yeah, and, and then I'll just sell it as motor spins, motor turns easy. But it you know. Just it's tell everybody enough. it had 35, 40, 50 PSI, whatever we get it to. I would just run it on the windshield like 50 PSI times six or whatever, and then that's fine. But it's not, she ain't gonna run unless you get 60 ish. It'll run, but it's just gonna smoke and, and putt and putter. Yeah. And it's not gonna be like, it almost makes it worse for me because then I say that it runs, but like that's not really running. Like it's not gonna be reliable. It still needs rebuilt. So there's no point in doing that and then selling it as running when it, it ain't. You might get it running when it's nice and warm in here and you can like control everything, but put it outside, let it sit, try and start it. Ice cold with 30 pounds, it's never gonna start. Yeah, see if you, if you get up 60 pounds, like you said, if you bust some of the coking off the valves, that's one thing. Unfortunately, we can't see them on a flathead, but they all got parked for a reason. This thing might've just burnt some valves and lost compression and still good that it turns out. It's definitely rebuildable. But with all the stuff we have to do around here, I'm not really like, not hard set on making this one run. This is an undesirable motor anyways. If it was a flathead V8 and we were having these problems, I'd be giving you a laundry list of stuff to, to do to kick up the compression, but just a flat six. Fun fact, there's only a five horsepower difference. This is 80 horse and V8's only 85. So there's really no power difference between the two. But the V8 sounds, it's got that iconic flathead V8 sound. 
This just, just sounds like generic. All right, you know what you're doing. That stinks we're missing one of them bumperettes. Those are pretty hard to get. Yeah. What's the firewall, Shane? What color is it? Blue. Okay. That stinks somebody put yellow on here because this yellow is like heavy. I'm afraid to expose more yellow because, oh no, you know what? Yellow's on the outside, right? What was the original? Yeah, yellow under. It's like this door was white, yellow, blue. So we don't- We have the color. original picture of the truck. Can you tell the color of what it was? I think it was this color. Yeah, that's what I thought too. It was yeah. like- Picture's in black and white, but it's a really dark color. It's just weird because this blue's on top of this yellow. Like if you mess with this door, we're getting yellow. They might have read did something on that side of that yeah. truck at one point. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it was. That's what I was saying. I think something happened. I think on this, this is side. a big truck door or something. Because yeah, something happened on this side. Because you got damage here. It looks like somebody hit this door when the door you was closed because it, it was jams out. Then it in. Too. Yeah, something happened. This is a replacement door. This door's not original. This truck. The door hinges are welded. That was the only way they probably got that door fitting right and then welded the hinges so it didn't move. They all got a story. Every single one of them. Um, the glass goes in the dumpster for sure. The dumpster's empty ish, as you know. We'll bump it one more. I'm going to sling it every They probably didn't, but so what you want to look for before you're working on one of these old trucks, and you got it up on stands like this with the front wheel hanging, I'm sure. Sure, Clay already knew this. There's a drive shaft in this, so what you want to make extra sure of is that this thing is in neutral. Or jack it up, all four. So then if he bumps that starter, it doesn't kick it off the jack stands. A lot of people that I've heard of and known in my life have gotten smushed by their antique cars, messing with trying to get one to start, and the thing's on jack stands with the rear wheels on the ground, and that thing just goes whoop. That's something that you got to constantly be aware of working in the shop. That's it in like 70. All right, see what else you get. Yeah, if it's yeah. that high, then it's gonna run, but it's just a waste of time to try and get it to run super low. Well. Yeah, see, and it's it like took 60. you, it should be getting 70 on second stroke, not three, four. Like when that comes up on compression, you should be seeing. Yeah, now. Nah. This thing's stuck again. Oh. You can, I have a threading, a thread in one too. See how that's any better. That's a little better. How are we doing? just hanging around now they're all between 75 and 60 besides this one so I'm just marking this a little bit we'll just leave that so the more it soaks some rings the more they're gonna free up it's not terrible compression for mm -hmm. what this is so you want to go any further with this one with what we got so far, because if it sits longer, it's going to go up about another 10. All right, yeah, let it hang out and do some of this bark shit. I agree. I mean, did it's... You dump, um, so where did you dump it? In the cylinders? Did you dump it down the uh, intake too? Dump it through the... Yeah, I'm going to do that too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you got two different channels. So yep. they're really going to the same place, but you'll get it on the top of the valve going down through the intake manifold. So intake valve opens up air comes in from basically the carburetor so he'll get that all up on top of that now all he's getting now putting it through the spark plug holes is he's hitting the exhaust valve you need both to make good compression but now he's going to hit it both valves going through the intake 
Oh crap, there's a jumper there on there. Well, them six volts die quick, but usually the generator charges it as you're spinning them over and stuff. Because as long as it's connected to it, it would originally charge it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's not being connected to the generator or anything. You know, you run into stuff like this. Now, we should whirl real quick. That's like a hundred. <laughs> like a hundred. Like a hundred. Like seventy. Like a hundred and twenty. Shit one. A hundred and twenty five. Honor. Yeah, call him. All right, so this is a good time for, for me to address something here because we're in the middle of this video. At this point in this project, me and Clay parted ways. Joe's going to be taking over. That's who you'll see in the rest of the video working on this. I'm making this announcement because we don't want, we're not talking about Clay. Don't make a comment about him. He doesn't want to be talked about. It's not appropriate for me to talk about him. I'm not going to. Um, it was a mutual parting of ways. Clay's got some things going on. We got a lot of things going on here. It just wasn't working anymore. And that's it. Please don't leave a comment about Clay. Don't ask me about Clay. It's none of anybody's business. We wish him the best on whatever he's doing. Iron City Garage is cool with Clay, but we're not working together anymore. And that's it. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the video, but please don't turn this into anything in the comments. You know, we'll look for a new tech when we need a new tech, but right now everything's cool. Just leave it at that. Iron City Garage is gonna keep on moving. Clay's gonna keep on moving. And that's it. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. It's like mud, huh? Steel, and they would... Oh, dude. Been paid for, and it's hopefully gonna work. Because they won't be there was about... We're, we're setting the points. Now, to do that, this block that opens the points on these points here, these these crowns on this camshaft, this has to be at the high point, and then you set them to whatever it calls for. So that cam turns around, and since it's shaped like, the, a, like a hexagon, it'll flap that thing closed. The, right, and every time they close, it saturates the coil, which is a big capacitor, mm -hmm. and then when they open, it discharges. Okay, so you get an arc. Yeah, that's how you get your spark. Yep, it's really simple. Does it matter which way you face the rotor when you put yeah, that Yeah, on? there's a flat there's spot. A, there's a notch in it, okay. Yes. There you go. Saving these moss turrets for anything? Or? Okay, that's done. We'll see if we got any juice in the battery. Well, I had the charger on it. I'm not sure what he did here. I have to get inside to look. This needs to be grounded, not hot, which is the way Fords work. They work on a, the button that you push on the dash goes to ground to activate the cylinder. I want to crank it and see what, what's going on here. Compression wise. Where's our bunch of rags? I don't want it spraying all over the, you just want to lay like two rags here, so the, if it sprays oil, it won't go far. Okay, looks yeah, good. Let's looking. take a compression test. A, a straight shot like this, you don't need that, you know. Screw in one. Screw in, yeah. Okay, so we got uh, 75. Which is good, that's startable. 75 is good. Yeah. 75. 75. 55. This is the one you were talking about that was a problem. Sixty-five. Not bad. Sixty-five. 
70. That all could change once the engine starts and it gets heat, you know, and, and things start to get oil up around the rings. Okay, now when it comes up on compression, that's where you want number one to be. Line that up with the mark on the crankshaft, which is right there. So there we are, we're, we're good. We're gonna put that on top dead center. You're seeing now that's number one right there. We're gonna put the plugs in, we're gonna put the cap on, all that's gonna be done. Cool.
done. Me and Shane had to finish it, but that was fine. We actually had a nice morning because the weather is terrible outside. It's pouring down rain, but this 51 or 52 Ford F1, whichever it is, is all done. 52, Shane says. Sorry, I got a couple of them. Flathead, six-cylinder, running, driving, holding water. This would be a good truck to do the brakes on, and that's it. Running like a sewing machine, a little smoky. It's probably just a lot of like lubricant from us getting a motor running, sitting in an exhaust manifold. I expect it to clear up but we're gonna get this one across the street. Time to get it photoed, wrap up this video and see if we can find it a new home. So we're gonna get it across the street right now. Park it underneath that car for Nobody tunes a carburetor like Joe Bass. Finally done, got the title back. Running, driving, not stopping, but running and driving, holding water. 52 Ford F1, real nice Western truck, all complete, bench seat, motor, transmission, blah, blah, blah. All the trim, it has these weird California style wraparound bumpers on it. Some tail lights off of something, not sure what. Nice truck to do a restoration. Beautiful truck to do a patina thing on because you're not really missing anything. Good title on it. We're going to be asking 8,500 bucks on this one. Get a hold of me if you're interested. 412-335-6100. Hey, thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have cars like these in your garage, if you have a fastback Mustang or convertible Impala, a nice original paint pickup truck or an old cab over truck, and you want to sell it, I'd love to try and put a deal together with you. You can get a hold of me at 412-335-6100. We pay excellent prices. We pay finder's fees. You know, it's no secret. We do make a little money on a YouTube video, so that allows me to pay, you know, sometimes market value or really good prices for these cars. We'd love to come out and drag it out of your barn. We'd love to film it. We'd love for you to be a part of that whole process. So if you have an original paint or an original old 
fastback Mustang that needs work, like these ones I have on my trailer, or if you have an old pickup, or again, a convertible Impala, cab over truck, whether it doesn't matter where you are, we buy nationwide here in the United States, all the way as far as California. I've had stuff, New Mexico, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, high desert stuff we love. So, or if you're in the East Coast and it's a rusty Mustang or a rusty convertible Impala, that is fine. We typically don't buy many trucks on the East Coast, but I buy a lot of cars on the East Coast. If you have cab over parts also, especially for these early Fords, I'd be interested in that. It never hurts to send me an email or a text, ironcitygarage at gmail.com. You're welcome to send me an email or a text message, probably the best. You kind of get an instant answer that way, 412-335-6100. I'd love to talk to you. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, hopefully we can make a deal on what you guys have on your farms or in your garages. 